Welcome to Clayton Valley Presbyterian Church on this first Sunday after Christmas and the last Sunday of the year 2020. I have just a couple of announcements. In case you or someone has missed the announcement last week, Pastor Barbara is on vacation this week. We hope you'll find the service of music and song moving and uplifting. There will be a short congregational meeting on January 3rd to elect Lori Martinez to replace John Miller on session. John has tendered his resignation. We hope that he's uh, doing very much better. In addition, we will vote to select Ruth Wyman to take Lori's place as a member of the nominating committee. These will be voted on before training and installation on uh, January 10th for the new officers. There will be training on January 9th for all the elders and deacons.
May the excitement of Christmas not dim our desire for hope, peace, love, and joy in this world as we go forth into the new year. Our, our Savior, Savior is born to, to lift our burdens, burdens and to replace tears of sorrow with tears of joy. We are not alone, so shout, sing, and dance in new life. We continue to light the candles on the Advent wreath. May we continue to sing our continuing prayers of hope, peace, love, and joy. Please join me in the uh, prayer of confession. O oh God, the prophet proclaims, the angels announce, the star lights the way, and we still ask, where? Like children, we stand first on one foot and then the other, waiting impatiently for a parade, so eager for the bands, floats, that we miss it. We want circus. We want ringmasters and acrobats, tigers and elephants, beautiful bareback riders, not some straw shrewd hovel with a swayback donkey and a tired woman of color. God, keep us willing and alert that when you reveal yourself, we may be aware. Amen.
during the celebration of God's grace. The good news is that God gives us opportunities in each and every day to see God anew, to experience the divine all around us. The good news is that God is there to help us to see, to hear, to feel, and to know God and one another more fully in each other than every moment. The good news is God, Emmanuel, with us as a newborn baby, fragile yet strong, vulnerable yet generous to overabundance. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, we got good news, 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 good good news, 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 good news,
prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy dominion come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the dominion and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture reading today is from Isaiah uh, 61 and 62. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. I am overwhelmed with joy in the Lord my God, for he has dressed me with the clothes of salvation and draped me in a robe of righteousness. I am like a bridegroom dressed for his wedding or a bride with her jewels. The Sovereign Lord will show his justice to the nations of the world. Everyone will praise him. His righteousness will be like a garden in early spring, with plants springing up everywhere. Because I love Zion, I will not keep still. Because my heart yearns for Jerusalem, I will not remain silent. I will not stop praying for her until her righteousness shines like the dawn and her salvation blazes like a burning torch. The nations will see your righteousness. World leaders will be blinded by your glory. And you will be given a new name by the Lord's own mouth. The Lord will hold you in his hand for all to see, a splendid crown in the hand of God. The second reading is from Luke 2, 22 through 40. Then it was time for their purification offerings as required by the law of Moses after the birth of a child. So his parents took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. The law of the Lord says, if a woman's first child is a boy, he must be dedicated to the Lord. So they offered the sacrifice required in the law of the Lord, either a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon he was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law requires, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace, as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, This child is, is destined to cause many in Israel to fall and many others to rise. He has been sent as a saying, sign from God that many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of my heart will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very soul. Anna, a prophet, was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Philip from the tribe of Asher, and she was very old. Her husband died when they had been married only seven years. Then she lived as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but stayed there day and night, worshiping God with fasting and prayer. She came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began praising God. She talked about the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. When Jesus' parents had fulfilled all the requirements of the law of the Lord, they returned home to Nazareth and Galilee. There the child grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was upon him. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The sermon time this morning will not be a spoken word, but we are blessed to have three musical selections that raise the question, what gift would I give the Christ child? I invite you to meditate on this question while you hear these pieces.
Bishop, pray with me the offering prayer. Giving takes so many forms, God. Take all that we offer in time, talents, and resources. Take all that we are to use for you and your people. We have received so much. May we, out of gratitude, return a portion in joy and thanksgiving. Amen. As our pastor Barbara often says, life is short and we have a little time. May we take advantage of that time to spread the Christmas joy and peace and hope to all who need it, be it for their pain wherever it is, be it for those who are lost, for those who are hunting, for all that we see and know of. Make them the recipients of our Christ child gift. And now may God bless us as we go forth into the world in some form or fashion. May we be blessed with the joy of Christmas, with the joy and opportunity of sharing all that we encounter in whatever way we may meet them. Amen. <laughs>